Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Knox Honister jacket. This is a breezy summer bike jacket with a lot of mesh material to keep you cool when it's warm outside, but it's more than a summer bike jacket. Knox like to think of the Honister as part of a revolution in the way that we wear bike kit. The idea is this can be worn as a standalone protective jacket in warm, dry weather, or you can put extra layers over the top when it's cold or wet, or cold and wet. Knox have other layers that will do that job if you want to add them, but there aren't any connecting loops to attach this inner jacket to the outer jacket or anything like that, so you can put your own choice of layers over the top if you prefer, and that's something that existing owners have done with their Honister jackets. Rather than talking about the extra layers, we're going to concentrate on the Honister alone for this review, as I wore this mostly on its own to find out what it was like as a standalone jacket. Now the first thing that's important to say, this is a proper protective bike jacket. You don't need to wear anything over the top to have full crash protection. This alone meets the highest of the three levels within CE, that's AAA, and it's also kitted out with a full set of armour that meets the higher level within CE. The fact that this jacket is AAA CE is particularly impressive. When testing is done on a garment like this, there are different expectations for different areas based on how likely that part is to hit the deck in an accident. So when you're going for the lowest CE rating, which is single A, the areas that are considered low risk, like the front and inside the arms, they aren't tested for abrasion resistance at all. But when you're going for AAA, those low risk areas are still tested. And to pass, an area like that needs to meet the same protective level as the material that's used in the most vulnerable areas on a single A jacket. That means in theory, a suit made entirely from this mesh material could still pass the lowest level of the CE standard. Now this mesh material covers a large portion of the front, the inside of the arms, and there's also some more at the upper back. The rest of the outer is made from DuPont Stretch Cordura, which is in the most vulnerable areas for the rest of the jacket, which gives a very, very close fit. The thinking behind that close fit is that keeping the armour as close to your body as possible gives it more chance of absorbing or deflecting energy if everything goes wrong one day. It does, like I said, have a very close fit, and I've experienced that in the couple of hundred miles of road riding that I've done in this jacket. I found it quite reassuring and still comfortable as there's plenty of stretch in the material to make sure you can move around on the bike. If you've ever worn a one-piece leather suit that's got stretch fabric panels inside the arms and inside the legs, areas like that, this feels like a thicker version of that material. You also get thumb loops at the wrists, which help keep the sleeves held down. It was a close enough fit on my arms to not really need loops to put keep the sleeves in place, but I used them anyway, and actually they didn't get on my nerves, which is quite a surprise, as I've never really got on with thumb loops on anything before. But by using those, what I found is that I could wear this jacket with short gloves, and I still wouldn't have a gap in the coverage at my wrists, which was quite handy. The fastener up the middle is a good quality YKK zip, and there are a couple of nice touches with that as well. There's a rubber flap at the bottom, which makes sure the base of the zip can't scratch your bike tank, and then there's a small piece of fabric at the top, which stops the zip puller flapping around in the wind. You get three external pockets, you get two at the waist and one at the lower back as well. Like the main fastener, the zip vents on the pockets all have rubber-like protection for the base of the zip and then a fabric section at the top to stop the puller flapping around in the breeze. Inside the jacket, there's a thin fabric behind the mesh. It has a similar thickness and feel to cotton and I didn't find that that hindered the cooling effect through the mesh in my experience. There's an airtex like material that lines the back and then the rest of the jacket has no lining at all. It's just that single layer of stretch cordura. There are two sections on the inside that look like pockets, but Knox don't describe them as such, and I wouldn't recommend using them as pockets. I say that because they're not stitched all the way to the bottom, and that creates a gap where your stuff can slip through and fall out of the jacket. You probably have to be quite unlucky if that happens, but it's probably best to play it safe, and if you're going to keep something in the pockets, put it in through the outside of the jacket just here. There's armour at the shoulders, the elbows and the back. It all meets the higher level two within the CE impact protection standard and the back protector is particularly impressive. It's reassuring in both its thickness and also the amount of your back that it covers. There's provision for impact protection at the chest as well, but you need to buy that separately if you want it. The protector insert attaches to a Velcro panel inside the jacket and it meets the basic level one of the CE standard. One of those inserts costs £39.99 as we record this, and there's a link to the item in the description below. The inside of the jacket is also where you'll find the label showing the CE protection level. Understandably, Knox aren't shy about saying this meets the highest level that's currently available. They've even put the letters on a gold background. 
Knox have also found a neat way to stop the jacket riding up and separating from your trousers. Now, most people, I think, will wear this jacket with a pair of denim jeans, which is exactly what I did. So there are two loops at the base of the jacket's interior that act as a pair of extra loops for your belt as you thread it through the loops on your jeans. There are even two sets of them. So if you wear your jeans like Simon Cowell, then those loops will still be in the right place for you. Now, one thing I found with this idea, to take the jacket off, I had to undo my belt and start removing it from my jeans. And let's just say it looked a bit weird when I started taking off my belt in the cafe where we often stop for lunch. Okay, so before I go too much into my own thoughts on what the Honesters like to wear, let's cover off sizing. The Honester comes in sizes from small up to 5XL, and that ranges from a 35 inch chest up to a 54 inch chest. Knox's sizing is a little different to most though, so look at the size chart carefully before you order. I take a 40 inch chest in virtually every bike jacket, which is usually a small or a medium. With this, I wore a large, which Knox says covers 41 to 43 inches. Probably could have gone a size smaller, but it would have been very snug, and I felt more comfortable in this size large. Now, this one is a good example, really, of a jacket where trying on in advance of buying will help if you're able to. Okay, so I rode for somewhere between 100 and 200 miles, I'd say, in this jacket in cool conditions as Britain was taking forever to warm up this spring. I also find that cool weather is a good time to find out how much air a jacket flows as it's easier to feel cold air when it hits your body. This jacket definitely flows air through the mesh sections on the front and inside the arms and had a noticeable effect whenever I wore it. As a jacket, I enjoyed the feeling of having all the protection close to my body as well. There's a reassurance that comes with that and also there's very little for this jacket to billow around in the wind. Now, the Honester's been around for a year or so as we record this, and that means we've got some customer feedback through the reviews on both our site and also on Knox's site. A couple of owners who have worn their Honester's in very hot conditions, around 30 degrees C and up, so the arms do get a bit sticky on days like that. Even though I've not ridden in that sort of weather, I can see how that would happen, as there's no room for air to flow up the sleeves. I would guess that's just a downside, really, to bear in mind with a robust and more protective jacket like this, rather than going for something that's light and thin it will flow a lot more air, but it just won't offer the same level of protection as this jacket in case you should need it. I liked wearing this jacket. It's full of innovation and clever ideas. I found it comfortable and also very effective at bringing through a cooling breeze. At £379.99, the price is quite high for a jacket that will need other layers put in over the top to protect you from the cold and the rain. There are plenty of complete all-season bike jackets around that will give you waterproofing and warmth protection for that money. But there's nothing else like this around at the moment. A breezy jacket that looks after protection to a high standard all on its own, letting you put your own weather protection over the top if and when you need it. It's made to a very high standard and it's easy to see why the price sits where it does. I enjoyed wearing this jacket and I can see why it has a lot of appeal to actually quite a broad range of riders. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Knox Honester jacket, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.